All right, what's going on, guys? Back up for another episode of the uh, Never Ending Megalo Project. It's been a while since I've been up here and worked on it, but it's just been so hot and then so cold and then so rainy. So um, I got some more stuff done. Unfortunately, my, my video camera's been acting up, so we're going to be using the uh, the cell phone here. So I took some pictures of, of where we, uh, of the, the steps that I did kind of along the way to get everything to where we are now. And then going forward, what I'll do is I'll just use the, the cell phone to go ahead and film that stuff. So uh, we're working on, you can kind of see back here, I have the uh, monitor mount. It won't be that tall if we're just using that piece of wood because it was solid. Uh, the monitor mount is actually through the back and lined up. Let's go ahead and check out some of the steps along the way of what we did, and then we'll get caught up from where we are going forward. Let's go. All right, what we have here is the uh, the back of the main part here. There's a, a solid piece of steel that actually goes underneath the uh, the top plastic of the Megalo. But what we were trying to do is I was trying to, to get this piece of wood centered on this solid piece of steel here. Uh, and then basically we're going to cut a hole that you'll see here in a second through the top uh, plex or top plastic fiberglass um, of the of the megalo shell to kind of go up through so we can actually mount the uh, television wall mount to this piece of wood and then mount the monitor to that. Um, so the first thing I did was basically, you, you can kind of see the tape here, I, I took some uh, masking tape. Once I had the pieces of wood centered, I drilled through um, the, the steel and the wood kind of kind of mounted that and then this, the tape is kind of used as my measure marker which we'll see here on this next one. All right, so here we can see the uh, the wood from the front um, and you can see the, the bolts that we use to kind of run through both the wood and that steel to mount everything. Uh, the masking tape is kind of uh, my measuring or, or my uh, my lining tool. Uh, once we put the, uh, the top piece over, uh, I can get an idea of where exactly I needed to cut that uh, fiberglass to, to try to get this as straight as possible. I didn't want to have a gigantic hole um, that was way too big for the wood to go through. So I tried to get it as close as possible while leaving a room for power and HDMI uh, to go through that hole. This is just kind of another overall look of uh, the, the masking tape used as a lining tool. I kind of tried to keep it as straight as possible this way. We made that hole. We didn't have too much excess to kind of deal with. But you can see here I put the tape all the way from the back where the, the wood is mounted all the way to the front uh, the control uh, where the control panel sits so we can get an idea of what, what was as straight as possible. The two uh, white pieces of metal there in the front are, are dead centered. They're also lined up with the coin door beneath, so I knew that was absolute center towards the front. All right, so here is the first uh, attempt at the hole. I was lucky enough that if you can kind of look, the, the there's a ridge in the middle of this picture where the hole basically on the front side, the right side of that, that rectangle hole. It actually kind of bows around. Uh, the wood lined up exactly to where that bow was, so I just used my jigsaw and cut along that curve. In the back end, uh, I measured the thickness of the wood, which is about three quarters of an inch, so I cut it a little bit big. Uh, my first attempt was a little bit snug, so I went back with some sandpaper and kind of uh, made it a little bit bigger so it would slide over everything easier. But luckily, the hole was pretty much exactly center. It, it's slightly larger on the right-hand side, which is fine because that's where the HDMI runs anyways. Uh, so it actually worked out pretty well. All right, so here we see the uh, top fiberglass shell of the Megalo over that, that monitor wood, and you can see that the hole's pretty much spot on. We left that little bit of room on the on the right-hand side, really the left-hand side when you're just lo looking at it to, to fit those uh, power and HDMI cables through. And again, with, with sanding just a little bit, I wanted a little bit of room for the wood to flex just slightly, uh, so it's not dragging when you, when you mount the, the top shell over the wood. All right, and here's another view from the front where you can actually see the the, the measuring method that I used with the tape to kind of run everything to make sure that it was right. So maybe not the best way to do this, but it did work. Um, kind of just eyeballing it and taking my time and kind of double checking all the, the tape and measurements. It, it came out pretty straight. So I'm actually really happy with it, uh, with how everything lined up. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and jump into some current video that I recorded today with uh, mounting the monitor on this beast. All right, and that brings us to where we are now. So as you can see, we've got the uh, gigantically tall monitor mount. We went ahead and uh, picked up a uh, cheetah mount here. So basically this little guy here, standard flat screen television wall mount. We're going to basically line this up here where it needs to go so we can get the right height. We really want the bottom of the monitor to basically be like even with this so you're not really missing anything. But it's probably going to mount about here or so and then we can adjust the monitor. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is get this leveled and go ahead and line it up on here and then we'll pick this up once we have everything kind of lined up. Alright, so we have this mounted. Let's see here we got it pretty dang straight. Uh, I did run out of hardware to mount the thing, so we're going to go ahead and continue with mock-ups, but I'll pick up some more hardware to get the uh, third bolt in there. But for now, it's good. It'll, it'll hold that monitor. It doesn't weigh much. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the actual uh, cheetah attachment arms onto the uh, television here and go ahead and hang it on there and kind of see how high or low we need to uh, move this guy. So let's get to it. All right, so we have it mounted. 
but unfortunately I do not like this gap right here so I'm gonna go ahead and lower the uh, monitor mount TV mount bracket probably about two inches I'm thinking we're gonna lower it about two inches I really don't want to have any gap or at least a very small gap right here I don't want people to see cables and stuff here so I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull the monitor off that's why I kind of left the feed on because I figured we'd have to kind of guess it go ahead and move that down and then also what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut off this excess wood so we just kind of have the uh, monitor kind of mounted like this you'll see what it looks like so I'll go ahead and lower that cut that piece of wood and then we'll pick it back up after that's all done all right so here the uh, monitor mount is fully cut to the right size see how much smaller that gap is now it looks much better so people will be able to see the HDMI cable and that kind of junk hanging out but uh, yeah so we're gonna go ahead and mock everything up just so we can get a, a better feel of what we're gonna be seeing when we sit down and play uh, the feet obviously aren't gonna stay on there they're just there so I can take the monitor off and kind of rest it on the floor for now but we'll go ahead and pop everything on here Let's kind of show you the back real quick if you want to see. Got everything cut to the right size. Kind of hanging out for now. And again, this will all be cleaned up. I'm probably going to make a bracket that covers all the cables and stuff. But uh, let me go ahead and throw everything back on here so you can kind of get an idea of what we are, uh, what we're playing with. All right, so we have everything mounted and mocked up. And I've got to say, I'm actually uh, pretty happy with it. So we'll go ahead and flip this around here. Take a look at it. So here we go. Here we have the monitor mounted. Again, the feet are gonna come off, but this is just kind of a mock-up so you guys can see eventually what this is gonna look like. So we still have a lot of work to do, got a lot of cleanup, gotta make the uh, mounts for the bottom here. We gotta mount the coin door and drill the holes for the USB Nutrix, finish up the corners of the control panel. We got a wire, we have a lot of stuff to do, but this is a huge, huge weight off my shoulder to get this thing mounted because I was always just sweating cutting into that uh, plastic or fiberglass, whatever it is, gel coat. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. It actually looks pretty good. So if you sit here, you can kind of get an idea. Again, this control panel is kind of just sitting here, so I hope it doesn't fall off. But you're going to sit here, and then as you look up, the whole width of the cabinet is a 4K uh, LED monitor. So pretty happy with that. It's a very comfortable height to play. Again, you have all your buttons and start and all that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and have... I'm going to hide the home button so people can't hit them. Um, we got to fix this button. It's kind of resting on the, the support there, but... Hide the home buttons. Again, we're gonna have the original stock Sega speakers here. Um, I kind of wanted to put like a little computer monitor in this, just like to have like something while you're playing, but for now I'll probably just do instructions or something or a flipping great pinball logo or something. Maybe in the future we'll come back and address that. But you can see here the gaps look perfect. I love how like good that looks. It's pretty much the exact same way across. It's a little off center just because this leg's a little higher over here because the speaker's not sitting flush, but Everything is leveled out, so we'll have that. We're gonna paint the back white. We gotta manage all that stuff. I might put some LEDs under here to kind of shine down, just for some added effect. Make it look pretty neat or something like that. But that's pretty much where we are with it today. It was, a, it was a lot of work, but again, a huge weight off my shoulder to get that thing cut. So again, let's check it out kind of from afar. My shop's crowded right now because it's raining, but it's actually starting to look like an arcade now. But this is the overall current status of our Megalith. So sorry it took five months to get back to it, but now that we got this mounted, we got maybe 10 more hours of wiring and painting and cleaning and stuff, so we'll get this done soon. Hopefully early 2020, this will be up at uh, Flippin' Great Pinball and we can get on to the next one. But thank you guys for tuning in as always, I do appreciate it. Uh, we've got a bunch of new subscribers. I've uh, been doing a lot more stuff on Twitch too, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it below, but it's twitch.tv forward slash pass blast. I picked up a split fire, so we've been streaming a lot more uh, arcade stuff with that. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Next time you see me, I may not have this gross beard on my face, but there's a Megalo there. It actually looks pretty cool. I'm happy with it. It's getting good. So, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.